responsibility. But then it even extends to their spouse and dependent children. So that the Honorable Wanjala, who I think has just walked out, and who by his own admission is a serious polygamist, would then be required to ask his wives for full disclosure of what they owe and own, and to include in that declaration. This is a breach of Article 31 of the Constitution, and especially because once you've declared, it then becomes information held by the state, which anyone can access. The Honorable Speaker, I have raised 15 different points. I do not need to read them again because you are well seized of them. I urge that it be considered uh, uh, by yourself, Honorable Speaker, in addition to the report of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee so that we can seriously reconsider this bill because this bill has the potential of harming ourselves. Self-preservation has always been the most basic human instinct. Let us not be a house that is given to self-infliction of pain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Tienda uh, Molo, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me first thank uh, Senior Counsel Tienda Molo for those issues and indeed confirm that uh, the Honorable Tienda Molo did write a letter very detailed letter with all those 13 or 14 issues and he did copy my office and I remember Honorable Speaker discussing the same with yourself and the chair of the JLAC uh, committee who unfortunately is not here but the vice chair Honorable Mutusa is here and uh, we have further discussed all the issues that were raised by the Honorable Otiende in his letter with the chair and the vice chair of the JLAC committee and I believe Honorable Speaker given an opportunity since the chair is away, the vice chair should be able to appraise us on where fast they are in terms of looking at those issues among us, many other issues that came up during public participation and which, uh, as uh, has been indicated by uh, senior counsel, already some of those issues are being addressed by the jailer committee. Honorable Speaker, it's also worth uh, mentioning to the Honorable Tienda Omoro that in the house business committee this morning we did agree to stand down that uh, conflict of interest bill from this afternoon sitting uh, for committee of the whole first to allow the jaila committee to complete the work that they were already doing uh, to maybe later tomorrow or the day after whenever time will allow and when the house business committee will be able to schedule business but honorable speaker just to note that as much as i may agree with the honorable tiende on a number of things touching on, especially on definitions of who a relative is, who a public officer is, because that which is provided, uh, explicitly provided for in the Constitution, we can not then seek to redefine it in statute, because the Constitution is the supreme law of the country, and any other law that then we enact that uh, is in uh, conflict with the Constitution, Honorable Speaker, when I was studying commercial law in my CPA, we are told that is, uh, it becomes ultra virus and therefore any such definition that goes against what is provided for in the Constitution, then it will be ultra virus the Constitution and become null and void. However, Honorable Speaker, the definitions like a relative, the Constitution does not define who your relative is. But then it begs a moral question as to how far do you define who your relative is as a public officer? Your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, some that you may not even know, uh, if they are doing business, Honorable Speaker, and they don't eat in your house, they don't depend on your pay as a public officer, they have no di direct relation with you, then can you then say that there is a conflict of interest between that distant relative and yourself as a public officer? Therefore, those are issues, Honorable Speaker, that are already before the... Uh, Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, of which I believe the Honorable Otiende Amolo is a member. I was hoping he would indicate where they are as a committee, uh, but I am informed he was not in the meeting today, um, uh, this morning. And therefore, I want to believe that JLAC will be able to appraise uh, us on the addendum they are doing that is touching on major amendments that will touch on some of these provisions that the Honorable Otiende has pointed to. But more importantly, Honorable Speaker, what is this bill seeking to do? 
Honorable Speaker, if you read our Constitution, Chapter 6 on Leadership and Integrity, this bill is breathing life to the chapter on leadership and integrity, and more so on matters touching on integrity. And therefore, I would tend to disagree with the senior counsel on issues that touch on integrity that they would not sit well in this bill because they do sit well uh, when we talk about issues to do with corruption and conflict of interest. Honorable Speaker, Chapter Article 75 of the Constitution, 75.1a. Honorable Speaker, if I care to read, that a state officer shall, and he makes it mandatory, shall behave, whether in public and official life, in private life, or in association with other persons, in a manner that avoids a conflict of interest, any conf conflict between personal interests and public or official duties. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, the long objective of this bill is to actualize that particular provision of uh, Article 75.1a, that you'll be avoiding conflict of interest between personal interest and public interest <laughs> or official duties. B, compromising any public or official interest in favor of a personal interest or demeaning the holder of that office, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, there are many other issues without even belaboring the point that uh, Honorable Tienda has also said we do not need to go through all the 15 or 13 items he listed, uh, but there are some that I would agree with and many others that I would strongly disagree with because they intend to actualize and breathe life to Article 75 1AB of our Constitution. And if you are truly intent, Honorable Speaker, on slaying the monster that we all talk about, slaying the monster and the dragon of corruption, which spreads far and wide, Honorable Speaker, and I've heard the issues that are being raised on self-preservation, even as we seek to do what we call self-preservation, Honorable Speaker. We must be careful <coughs> that we do not self-preserve in a way that we entrench conflict of interest in public offices, Honorable Speaker. Because we must lead from the front as the lawmakers in ensuring that there is absolutely no conflict of interest by public officers. And public officers, I want to agree with Honorable Tienda Amolo in that respect, that a public officer does not necessarily mean an elective office or people holding elective offices. It is not just members of parliament and members of county assemblies. We have governors. We have the executive, right from the president to the ministers and the principal secretaries who are in appointed offices. All those, Honorable Speaker, we must hold them to account using this bill and ensure that even as we seek to self-preserve, we also enact laws that will hold everybody, even members of parliament, honorable speaker, and members of county assemblies, and even governors and presidents and deputy presidents who are elective to account and to ensure that there is absolutely no conflict of interest in the way they conduct public office and there is a clear demarcation between your public affairs and your private business interests. Because, Honorable Speaker, if we are left in a, in a situation where the, the, there is a, a blood uh, distinction between what is private and what is public, Honorable Speaker, the era that we have been speaking of state capture will never come to an end. This is the opportunity we have as a house and the country and history will judge us based on what we do with this bill. If we speak so much about the fight against corruption, and every time there is mention of a scandal here and there, the political class are usually the first to speak against corruption. Let us not just speak about against corruption and speak about corruption. Let us 